Hello everyone. Today we're going to be starting Unit 4 and we're going to start with this first art project called 4.1 Where I'm From. The objective or the, or the learning goals for this particular project are to create a piece of art based on a memory, create art that communicates meaning, and create a point of emphasis in your artwork. Where I'm From poem. Now for this particular project, guys, you're gonna be creating a mixed media artwork and I'll explain what mixed media is in a second. But you're gonna create a poem uh, that you're going to basically use to inspire a piece of artwork. Okay, now don't be too scared about poem like Miss, this is an English class, I get that. Um, but I'm gonna provide a template and you guys are pretty much just gonna fill it out. So it just sort of matches sort of your life and your experiences throughout your life so far. So one of the most important pieces of this lesson is to dig deep into your childhood to memories that perhaps you had forgotten were even there. Here's a sample of where I am from. Okay, that's the title of the poem and I'll read this one to you. I am from the cardboard box from Dixie and Solo. I am from the screen door that never shuts right. I am from the stargazer lily and the carnations. I am from Korean New Year and Truth, from Bok Hui and Sung Chik and Anjung. I am from Spokane, Ramen Noodles and Sunny D. From the divorce, the yelling and the crying, I am from the family tree that's on fire. All right. So guys, here's a sample of what the poem, the Where I'm From poem is like. Okay, this is just a template. And like I said, guys, you're basically trying to fill in the blanks. Now, if you feel like as you're filling it in, you might need to change a word in the poem itself, that's totally cool. So say, for example, you wanna get rid of the end and change it to something else, that's not a big deal, okay? Uh, I don't wanna sort of interfere with your creative uh, senses here, all right? So <laughs> have some fun with it. You might have to, you know, play around with some words and see how they fit. Uh, but the goal here, guys, is to just, just reflect back on your life so far and especially reflecting back on your childhood memories. All right, so let me show you my example of where I'm from. Okay, so I am from Storybooks from Crayola, Chlorine, and Fuzzy Peaches. I am from the red brick house, my safe place in the sounds of wind chimes. I am from the maple trees, the pink peonies, I'm from Hockey Night in Canada and family get-togethers, from mom and dad, the man of steel. I am from the early birds and the heart of golds, uh, from, be, from be a good girl and, you are, and your head is in the clouds. I am from the crucifix and daily prayers. I am from the boot, Nutella and spaghetti and meatballs, from the grandparents that survived war and poverty, the orphan boy who dreamed of more. I am from the locket that rests close to my heart. Okay, so guys, this is my, I basically tried to fill it in with my childhood memories and my experiences uh, in this template of where I'm from. Okay, and that's basically what I'm asking you guys to do as well. All right, so once you guys have written your poem, the next question is, now what? The poem you have now written will be a source of inspiration for your mixed media art piece. All right, so say for myself, I like to maybe do an art piece focused very much centered around my dad. As I said to you guys once before that my father has been very ill in the last few years. And this year it's been really tough on me because because of COVID, I haven't been able to go see him, okay? So I'm gonna be focusing a little bit more on my dad and the memories I have with my dad for my particular art piece that I'll create, all right? So here are some memories. I might use some of these visuals here, okay, it, to incorporate into my actual art piece. Okay, and I also just want to mention, guys, in these samples that I will show you in a second, some students or even other artists, whenever they've done this type of a, an art activity where I'm from, some students have decided to put parts of their poem in their art piece. Some students have decided not to include any of the words from the poem in their art piece. Whichever one you choose is totally cool. It's up to you, you're the artist, you decide what you wanna include, okay? All right, so what is mixed media art? Using more than one media 
in a piece of artwork. So when I'm talking about media, I'm talking about paint. I'm talking about pencil, pencil crayon, watercolor. Um, you can also use collage. So in other words, taking photography and also embedding it into your composition and gluing it down, that sort of thing. Um, why would an artist use mixed media? Uh, different effects can be achieved with mixed media than with using just one medium. So there's, there's this very cool layered effect, effect with mixed media. And that's why a lot of students generally kind of have fun with this type of a project because they get to play with multiple things. All right, so here, for example, is acrylic paint, All right? Um, acrylic paint is great uh, for mixed media because it mixes well with others, well, with other mediums, basically. Uh, the bad, unfortunately, will not layer well over oil pastel. So oil pastel and acrylic don't generally go all too well together. All right, watercolor paint. Works well with pen, uh, collage, and graphite. Will not layer over acrylic, oil pastel, or wax. Okay, so just something to keep in mind. Graphite, so layers well over collage and acrylic. Okay, graphite's pretty popular. However, I'm not expecting you guys to have graphite at home. Okay, so I just wanted to basically just show you the effect of graphite here. Uh, colored pencil layers well over collage, watercolor, does not work well over oil pastel. Okay, charcoal. Again, guys, I'm not expecting you guys to have charcoal at home, but if you do, great. Uh, works well over graphite, colored pencil, and watercolor. Uh, doesn't layer well over oil pastel, acrylic, or wax, which is something to keep in mind. Uh, chalk pastels. Okay, so maybe some of you have pastels at home. I, I think a few people mentioned that they had oil pastels. If you don't have chalk pastels, guys, it doesn't really matter. Um, you could even use colored chalk for this if you have it or you're able to get some, you could do that too. Um, and it pretty much layers well over almost anything. Uh, however, again, oil pastel, acrylic, and wax, not ideal, okay? Um, oil pastel, again, doesn't layer well over chalk pastel and charcoal, all right? But it does work well with acrylic, pencil, and watercolor. Pen, layers well over marker, watercolor, pencil, collage, doesn't layer well over either pastel or wax, okay? But pen is pretty good for almost anything. Um, markers, so layers well over collage, pencil, watercolor. Uh, doesn't layer well over pastel and acrylic, so just keep that in mind. Uh, collage, I love collage. Uh, layers well over acrylic, watercolor, wax. Doesn't layer well over oil pastel, so generally oil pastel is not that friendly when it comes to working with other mediums, unfortunately. Uh, found objects, another thing that's fun here. Uh, layers well over almost everything except again, oil pastels. <laughs> okay, so this is another fun textural technique that you can use in your mixed media pieces. Uh, sewing, sewing can also be fun. You can sew through almost anything except some, some found objects, all right? Now, if you're kind of intrigued by the sewing idea, I would recommend getting like a canvas for this. Um, so for me guys, I, I, to be honest, I get most of my basic art materials at Dollarama. I don't really believe in spending a lot, a lot of money at Michael's for the basics. It's not really necessary. So if you really wanna do something on canvas, go to Dollarama, pick up a canvas. They're pretty cheap there. And you can do a cool sewing technique if you're really interested in that. All right, so the key component with mixed media is, la is layering, okay? So the sequence in which media are all applied to create depth on a surface. So here's a layering example. So say a student, oh, I really like this picture I found in a magazine, it looks really cool. All right. You then have to start figuring out, okay, so what's gonna be my next layer? What am I gonna put on top of this cool photo I found in a magazine? Okay, so here we see some wallpaper being put right in the back. It looks like the student found those um, scissors where you can cut out like cool different patterns along the side or along the edges of the paper. Okay, they cut out words from a magazine, not words, sorry, letters from a magazine and glued them down. All right, 
And it looks like they've, they're having fun with different printed pieces of paper and just being smart as to where they're placing it on top of the photo from the magazine, okay? Things even like the butterflies are kind of cute where they place them on her head, on the cat, <laughs> or the cats, sorry, okay? And then finally, the third layer that we see here is all this other kind of interesting sort of uh, visual interest that was created through pen. And it wouldn't be surprised if there even is some white out here, okay? So sometimes even since you use white out to like the white out pens to create that sort of visual interest of the white lettering or some type of white doodle, okay? Um, they do have the white paint markers, but those are pretty expensive and they're generally found at an art supply store like Michael's, okay? But I'm not really expecting something like that. Um, they've also incorporated fabric, which is kind of cool. All right. Now, to be honest with you guys, I think there's a lot happening in this composition, but the whole point of me just showing this to you is just the idea of working in layers, okay? And just, you have to plan it out right. You don't wanna glue something down like, oh wait, I need to put something underneath that, all right? Cause that's when it starts to get a little messy, all right? Okay, so color and emotion. So artists make colorful decisions when it comes to expressing their thoughts and emotions. Color choice is a very important element in communicating feeling. All right, so here we have a color wheel, but if you guys notice this color wheel has words that have to do with our feelings and our emotions. Okay, so for example, yellow here, the words that we associate with yellow or the feelings we associate with yellow are serenity, joy, ecstasy, okay? Uh, orange, it's interesting, vigilance, anticipation, interest, all right? Uh, red, ra rage, anger, annoyance. This pinky purpley color, uh, loathing, disgust, boredom, hmm, interesting. All right, then we have this violet purple color. So grief, sadness, pensiveness, this sort of aqua blue here, amazement, surprise, distraction, green, terror, fear, apprehension. And we have more so of this sort of grass green color here. So admiration, trust, acceptance, okay. And then there's all these other words that kind of go right in between here. So I guess it's if you're choosing to mix colors, okay, and what they could represent. All right, now this is just one example of a color wheel and how we associate emotion, okay? For example, I don't really think of green and terror, personally. I would put terror <laughs> uh, with rage over here in red, not personally. Uh, but again, you're the artist, how you use color is really, really important because it sets the mood and it gives the viewer an understanding of what you're trying to sort of convey emotionally. Okay, it's so like a clue for them to understand. All right, so here we have a painting where a lot of color is used, okay? And for me, looking at this image or looking at this painting, okay, even if I look back at this color wheel, I feel like there is a lot of anger. <laughs> there seems to be a lot of passion or rage in here. Okay, even just the way the looks, the eyes are looking right at the viewer in sort of a judgmental way or in a... <laughs> sort of angry sort of way, okay? And then if we look at some of the other colors here that are in the painting, like uh, surprise, perhaps there is this element of fear and apprehension too with some of the green and the aqua colors here, okay? That's also shown. So color is a very sort of powerful tool at your disposal uh, to communicate to the viewer. All right, so line and shape also have a lot to do with emotion and how we use line and shape can communicate how we're feeling as well. All right, so let's watch this quick video.
All right, so guys, I think that's a little great video just showing you how lines, basic shapes as well, um, can communicate a certain type of emotion, right? Usually organic lines, right? So lines that are very curved in nature um, are very calming, right? There's a sense of sort of grace looking at it. Uh, anytime the lines are very rigid and they're going in different directions, it's very confusing looking. There's a sense of anxiety too, all right? So again, it's just something to keep in mind when you're, com when you're completing this project. All right, let's go on to the next slide here. All right, so when looking at this image here, what emotions do you see in the image below? All right, now, if words like confusion, there's like even the word uncomfortable can be used here just looking at this, right? Because there's lines going in different directions. But I would say the word confusion <laughs> very much, I think, represents what I'm seeing here. There's this distortion. I don't know where to look. I just feel uncomfortable. It feels distorted. It feels weird. Those are the words I, I would use to describe this, okay? Here's another image, all right? Now, if I'm looking at it, if, you're, if you guys are like me, I'm getting the sense of anger, rage, frustration, right? Just in the sense of how these lines are being drawn and how fast they're being drawn. It's almost like there's just rage <laughs> in the artist's hands as they're drawing um, these lines down on a sheet of paper and also the colors that they've selected too, okay? Um, all right, so for exercise one, guys, what you're going to be doing now until 9.30, in a sketchbook or on a sheet of paper that you have uh, by you, I would like you guys to draw four boxes, okay, kind of like what you see here, and you're going to label the four boxes with the term below, all right? So, for example, the first box is anxious. I want you to draw lines that show anxiety. The next box, I want you to show lines or basic shapes that represent anger. Okay, so I want you to try and communicate that emotion just using lines and basic shapes. Same for anxiousness, sorry. Calm. Okay, what lines or shapes would you create or what would you put in this box to sort of represent calmness? Okay, and the last box is enlightened. So how would you represent enlightenment? with lines and basic shapes, all right? That's basically what you're doing for all four boxes, is trying to represent the emotion, okay? Or the feeling that's listed below each box, all right? So on D2L, you are gonna find um, a link that says submit your exercise drawing here. The goal, guys, is for you to submit this for around 9.30ish or by the end of, uh, end of class, okay? And it just counts as a completion mark, all right? Okay, so unpacking the emotions in your poem. So let's talk a little bit about your lovely ideas or concepts uh, for this particular project. When you're reading back your poem to yourself, I want you guys to just highlight or make note of some of the emotions you shared, okay? Is there a lot of happiness in the poem? Is the, are there some happiness and some somber? Or is the poem in general just very, very sad? Okay, so you're just making note of the emotions and the feelings that you have throughout your project or throughout the poem itself. Okay, so here's an example, student example, where I'm from. Now this one is a little bit more of a downer. <laughs> so I am gonna warn you about that. But again, this is how the artist feels about their childhood. All right, so. I am from the trash bin, from lost and found. I am from abuse. I am from the crooked tree and loss. I am from hide and seek and, bur and burnt wood from Amy, Scott and Blake. I am from the anger and the joy, from being worthless and an orphan. I am from nowhere but everywhere. I am also from pizza and PB and J. From my mother's funny tales, from Hutton, where I found family, where I was given a second shot at life, okay? So just in this poem here, the emotions that I get is the sense of sadness, uh, loss, um, 
I, I really like the phrases, I'm from nowhere, but everywhere. I really like that line in that poem. Uh, there's so much meaning there. There's so much there to unpack just in that one statement. Um, but I do like, and I do appreciate that the near the end, end of the poem, it does sound a little bit more hopeful, okay? Um, and so this particular student, student again, used a combination of photos, scraps of paper that were pasted, paint. Um, it looks like he did a drawing of himself, just the lower half in marker, um, and then cut it out and then pasted it right on top, okay? And it has this cool sort of visual effect that he created, all right? Here's another one, all right? And this is again, guys, working in layers. So what was the first step he probably did here? Paint the background all red, all right? Then he splattered some paint, all right? Um, perhaps he glued some of these titles down first and then splattered the, plant, the paint, that's what it looks like, okay? And even some of the photographs it looks like. I think the splatting of paint here was done last because it's on everything, all right? So as you, got, as you, the artist, you have to decide what order you're gonna do everything and what kind of overall effect you're trying to achieve, okay? So let's look at this poem that he wrote here. So I'm from the asphalt, from the rubber and the lights. I am from Chris and Chris and Drew. I am from the five second passes and a quarter mile burnouts, from hard work and staying dedicated. I am from Spokane, from Nitro Smokies and Burgers. I am from the track, the place of joy, simplicity and happiness, from the endless nights with friends who are family working and staying together. Okay, so these visuals very much focus on who he is as a person and his childhood memories, okay? So this particular piece, guys, I would say most of it is pretty much just photos he's cut out, but he's kind of done it in a kind of interesting sort of way, all right? Um, here we have at least a drawing here and just some of these sort of painterly sort of techniques that he's done where he's doing a striping to create some kind of repetition and pattern in the background that helps to create some visual interest. All right. Now you guys are very, very talented. So I'm expecting you guys to have more of an artistic hand than just, you know, plopping photos down. All right. Um, I'd like to see <laughs> some drawing, some painting of some sort that is sort of representative of you. However, you can incorporate found objects or collage as well if there's a purpose for them, okay? All right, so here is the rubric that I'm gonna use to evaluate you. So when it comes to the poem, guys, it's either complete or incomplete. So if it's complete, you get the 10 marks. If it's not complete, you get a zero, okay? Uh, mixed media skills. So I'll be looking at your ability to try uh, various mediums, uh, whether or not it's pre-planned, it looks logical, sequential, each material is used well, okay? Design, composition, and concept. So student applies the right elements and principles to their art piece exceptionally well. The final artwork is effective in terms of it, how it communicates, its message, emotion, etc. cetera, all right? Um, color choices. So color choice and application of color shows advanced knowledge of color relationships. Color choice enhancer, enhances the picture, All right? And then time and effort. So students submitted assignment on time and put a great deal of effort into this assignment. Okay, as we get further down, right? <laughs> the later and later the assignment is submitted to me, the less marks you get, right? So that's just how this is set up here. All right, the total mark for this assignment is 50 marks, okay? And that's basically the nature of this entire assignment is that you guys are going to create a poem that very much centers around your childhood memories. And then you are going to pick perhaps one element to focus on or a part of your po poem to focus on and try and represent that in a visual way, okay? And again, guys, some students have decided to showcase, say, a line in, of their poem into their actual uh, art piece. Some students have just wanted visuals, all right? Again, there's no right or wrong for that. That's your choice, all right? So guys, until 9.30, uh, please make sure that you complete the exercise. All right, have it submitted by the end of class today. And then you can start developing your concept and start working on actually the poem first. 
develop your poem. And then from that, you can start developing your ideas and your sketches. All right, so I'll see you guys all at 930.